plugin that caught my eye being a uh, vinyl cutter by trade, or well, was, haven't cut any vinyl for a few years, but that's where I learned, is the plugin from Waves, which is in conjunction with Abbey Road, and they've put together, they've, they've, and they have put together a plugin which is a VMS 80 and it's a kind of colour thing and it's just something to run your stuff through to add a bit of vibe and some crackle and pops and noise or just keep it clean and run through to warm up your digital signal and anyway let's stop talking dive in and I'll show you exactly what it does. So Abbey Road Vinyl, this is pretty cool. This is a VMS 80 lathe, I recognise that because I've worked on one a lot. Um, I trained on that years and years ago and have used it, yeah, tons. So let's have a flick through what the, all these settings are. So <laughs> TG Desk is their EMI console. So that's to the sound of their desk, so you can go through. Um, you can then listen to either the lacquer, which is, if you don't know, a lacquer is what you cut directly from your console your cutting console so maybe even pro tools and you cut directly onto a lacquer which is the master vinyl so that's the lacquer there or the print which is this is the pressing in effect so the test pressing at the factory hence why they've turned it around to look like a grubby vinyl factory because they are all grubby so we've got a swanky lathe or grubby vinyl pressing plant next thing up is <coughs> you can change the turntable type now on these um, VMS 80s, they have a, it's called a platter, and they have a super, super heavy, sturdy, there's no springs, there's no direct drive, it's, well, it's direct drive, but it's done on like a spindle. It's uh, really full on, on a VMS 80, so that's what this is for, for that um, there on the turntable. And then you've got a DJ turntable, which is obviously a Technics 1210. Um, 1200 whichever age you are and um, so you can switch that so that's going to have a different style of sound because you're going to get this is just a direct dr drive turntable and that is a full-on lathe with like you know really precise so that gives a different sound so we have different types of cartridges here that's a moving magnet this is a moving coil and this is a DJ so you can see the different types they just give different quality of sound as well whichever one you prefer um, then we go on you can add noise or take noise totally away so you can add some noise to it you can add some crackles you can add some clicks so you can really sort of vinyl something up if you really want um, or then there's the meters the input or the output so you can look at those you have an output here where you can push the output up you can monitor the left the right the mono or the stereo on their own uh, on this side here, we've got nice Abbey Road logo there and input to go against the output, obviously. And then there's a little drive thing here. So that's how much uh, that probably gives it a little bit of saturation, I'd have said. Um, we'll find out in a minute when we pre press play. Uh, then we have the wow and flutter. So we have the rate and the depth of those. Then we have this slow down here, so I'm not really sure what that does. Um, I'm guessing it just slows the turntable down a touch. Then tone arm, you can decide whereabouts the tone arm is playing from. Now vinyl will play faster as you get into the, the concentric circles. So as you get close to the center, it's obviously the, the stylus is working harder because it has to the the groove doesn't change essentially it just gets faster so there's more information for the stylus to pick up so as you move that close to the center the, you're going to lose detail that's why if people are cutting vinyl they want it loud and they want it to track well so the stylus to track the vinyl well they'll do it at 33 and they'll cut it on the outside of the disc because then you can get it loud it's running slower and you can also the stylus will pick up better so that's a little tip if you are cutting vinyl um, phase distortion, so this is just moving the phase around, you can hear what that does, um, <clears throat> that just kind of makes it sound really super wide and weird or really tight and close in, uh, that's probably the best way to describe that. And modulation, these are low and high cuts as you can see from these little, <clears throat> these little graphics there and then you've got some meters. So what does this sound like and how are we using it? Well I've had a little play with it and essentially what I, you could use it as a kind of colouring device after you've got a track, so you could play a track through it, 
color it up with some crackles, things like that. You could maybe do that on some um, individual instruments as well if you wanted to add a touch of vibe to it so that you could make it sound like an old sample or if you've got something that's freshly freshly made and you want to turn it into something that sounds old, you could mess around with these and get that to happen. But the way that me using it for mastering is just as something to play through to get to get some color, to get some vibe, and in the same way that I would with one of these um, plugins if I was using a tape plugin. So it's an emulation of something like that. To cut a long story short, these are the optimum settings that I use. There's no point in me going through loads of different ones. Uh, the TG Desk sounds good. It sort of cleans up the signal, adds a little bit of EQ to it. So you can hear that, that sounds really nice in. Then on the generation, the lacquer sounds better than the print to my ear. For This is for mastering, I'm saying. So this is playing on your master bus or something like that, just to sort of clean the sound up and get a bit of color in there. So uh, the lacquer sounds to me a bit clearer than the print. Uh, which would be the case really in real life. Uh, the same is for cleaner stuff. The turntable is going to be better when you play back off of the VMS-80 lathe, which I know in real life is the case, rather than a DJ one, but you might want that sound, but doubt it. And then the uh, moving coil is the best cartridge out of the three, I thought. And then noise off, crackle off, clicks off. Basically, I want all this off because I don't want any more noise on the track than I need, obviously, because for mastering, why would I want to add some noise? The sort of one of the last things you want to do, really. I'm monitoring it in stereo. I don't want to be in mono. Um, <clears throat> phase distortion off. I don't want to mess around with the phase. These two are off. So everything off for me, basically, in this in this scenario. I want all of these off. Oh, that's not off. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, switch all those off. And so all I want to do is go through with these settings and then see what it sounds like. So what I'll do is I'll press play now, I'll bypass it in and out and you can then see hopefully um, what it sounds like. So in summary, I think this is great. It cleans up the sound. It adds a nice bit of um, EQ. It doesn't really muddy it too much when I've got everything switched out, which is um, which is great. I love that. It adds depth and it adds color, which is brilliant. Uh, that's perfect for just having another vibe on things. I might tend to find that I use it too much, probably. If I had it on, I'd probably want to put it on everything because I think it's one of those betterizers that actually just sounds good on but uh, definitely go careful with it. But worth a look. I like it. I like seeing an old VMS-80. I like all this stuff. It looks really smart. It's cool. I think it's a, a great bit of kit just for, for coloring things up if you're looking for a little bit of analog flavor in your mixes, if they're all sounding a little bit digital, this will bring a bit of that back. So um, there you have it. That's the Abbey Road Vinyl. So there you have it. There's the Abbey Road Vinyl. It's a winner, I think. It's great fun. And obviously I like it because it reminds me of a nice old cutting lathe. And I think the graphics on it are great. They do do a light version of it as well. So if you don't want to have all those gubbings and all those things in your way, you can use their lighter version, which is just kind of, 
yeah, stripped down version of it. So check that out. That's with Waves. You can get a, a demo of that on there. So uh, check it out. See if you like it. Let me know in the comments. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.